welcome to part two of the explicit analysis of a roll cage. Once inside Mechanical, the first thing I'd like to do is set up my coordinate systems. So here, I've added a new coordinate system into the model that represents where the driver's center of gravity would be. And to create that, I just scoped the two exterior frame sections here, and that just finds the middle of all those points. Next, I want to come up to geometry and define our frame and wall. For the frame, I input our shell thickness and make sure we have structural steel here defined as the material. For the impacting wall, we want to change the stiffness behavior to rigid and just put in a sample thickness because it's going to be rigid, so the thickness is not as critical. Next, we'll insert a point mass representing the driver. For the scoping attachment, I'll select faces and select all of the seatbelt attachments I created inside Space Claim. Now to make sure it's in the correct location, I'll choose my new coordinate system and just put it at the origin of that coordinate system. Next, for connections, Elastani uses a body interaction object to define contact between all the different parts in our system. Here we just have two, however if there were 100 parts, body interaction would define contact between all those different parts in the given manner. Here we have frictionless contact defined. Next, we'll generate a default mesh and as a good starting point and see where that takes us in terms of model refinement. With the general mesh defined, something we can add unique to LS Dyna would be the CFL time step object. So I'll scope this to the frame, and then right click to generate results. And what this shows us is a contour plot ranging from the maximum to the minimum required time step for the explicit analysis. So here we can see some generalized regions of mesh around the front arm supports here. However, in this region, we can see some mesh refinement may be needed, either to a poor aspect ratio or very small elements. So we can use local mesh refinement tools, such as sizing, to select different regions of the model and better refine the mesh to more evenly distribute the time step throughout the model. In this analysis, we're just going to use the default mesh for now. However, that is an option you can find in some more complex analyses. A quick note is that once your mesh is, is generated, you want to go back into geometry and make sure that the surface offset is set correctly. So if I go and look at this corner, I took the exterior surfaces from the solid model so I want to make sure the shell elements are offset inwards. Here, using the top definition and offset type, I can see that is true. However, if I look at the bottom, it does the opposite. So this varies between model, but it's something important to check before you go ahead and solve. Moving on from the mesh, we can set up our LS Dyna solve with a fixed support defined to our rigid wall here. Next, we'll add in an initial velocity scoped to the entire frame. Move over to components, and then it'll be traveling in the negative x direction at about 30 miles an hour. With the overall conditions of the model set up, the last thing we want to add is in LS Dyna Pre, under part, and it will be the section. 
So we'll scope this section to the entire frame. And what that allows us to do is to control what type of shell element LS90 uses for the analysis. Here we'll allow it to control the formulation. However, we want to dictate five points of integration through the entire shell thickness in order to gain higher fidelity results. Finally, before we solve the analysis, we want to make sure there's an end time defined here under analysis settings. With all those set up, we can come up to environment and go ahead with the solve. With the solution complete, I've gone ahead and added a deformation and stress result. However, I want to add an additional acceleration probe scoped to the frame body in the X direction to ensure that we're getting a peak acceleration right when the frame contacts the wall. And this can be confirmed down here in the graph as we see the acceleration plotted over time. This peak acceleration value can also be used to qualify the overall design. Are we striking the correct balance between a compliant frame that reduces acceleration but also providing the necessary protection to the driver in case of a crash? This explicit analysis with a plastic material model can give us a very robust answer to that question. And if we want to parameterize this maximum acceleration over time, we can click on this box here that will bring it into the overall parameter space so we can make revisions to the model and then see how that acceleration changes based on initial conditions or material properties, for example. Overall, the stress result shows that local yielding is occurring within the model, so our plasticity law is taking effect. We can see that in the front regions here as the frame contacts the wall for the first time. Overall, this concludes our demonstration of an explicit analysis of a roll cage. Thank you.